In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to mix two different materials together into one material. So this is a question that I've gotten in the comments of some of my videos, so I thought it might be a helpful video topic. And this method works for materials which are using image textures, but it also works for procedural materials like these materials here. So for demonstration, I'm going to be using my procedural snowy ground, and then also my procedural rock cave wall. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can take both of these materials, and you can combine them together to create this really cool texture, and it kind of looks like a mountainous rock with some rocky areas, but then there's little bits of snow on the rocks. And I have tutorials on how to create both of these materials, so if you'd like to create both of these materials, I'll have the links in the description. And if you'd like to help support this channel and purchase the materials, then you can do that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. Or you can just mix whatever materials you want to mix together. And speaking of materials, if you like using procedural materials in your artwork, then definitely check out my Blender procedural material packs. And purchasing the material packs is a great way to help support this channel. Or if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. All right, so I'm going to be adding both of these materials on a plane, but you can of course add them to whatever object you're using. So I'm going to press Shift A, I'm going to go here to Mesh, and I'm going to add a plane. And I can bring this plane over and I'm going to scale the plane up just like that. And then I can press the Tab key to go into Edit Mode, and I want to subdivide this plane so that it has more geometry, because both of these materials are using displacements, and so I want more geometry to displace the mesh. So you can use the object context menu in edit mode and you can click on subdivide. And I'm just going to continue to do that. So just click on subdivide. Uh, I hit the W key because I use the right click select, but you can right click and then click on subdivide when the object context menu comes up. And I'm going to subdivide this many times so it's very detailed, but you don't have to subdivide it if your material isn't using displacements. And I'm going to hold down the Z button and move my mouse into the rendered view so I can actually preview the material. So I'm first going to select the plane, and then I want to click on the drop down here, and I'm just going to first select the procedural snowy ground. So now what I want to do is duplicate this material so that it is separate, and that way it won't affect the other material. So with this plane selected, I'm going to click on this button right here. It looks like two pieces of paper, and that's going to duplicate the material. So it looks the same because it has the same data, but it is now a separate material. And I can just rename this material to Rocky Snowy Ground. So this material is going to be the material which has these both mixed together. So I now need to click on the object which has the other material, and this this is the procedural rock cave wall. So what I'm going to do is press the A key and that is going to select all the nodes. Now I need to make sure I have an active node selected because you can see when I press the A key to select these nodes, they all have an orange outline. So to make sure I have an active node selected, I'm going to hold down the shift key and just select the shader, the principal shader, or you can just select anyone. So now that we have an active node selected, I can press Control C and Control C is going to copy all the nodes. You can also use the object context menu and click on the copy button. So now that we have the nodes copied, I'm going to click back over here on the other material and I'm going to hover my mouse in the shader editor and I'm going to press Control V or you can use the object context menu and you can click on paste. So it's going to paste those nodes into the material and then I can press G to grab and I'm just going to move them up here and then I can press Control J and and that's going to join them together into a frame just so that we can keep them very nicely organized. And I'm also going to click and drag and box select the other nodes here, and I'll press Ctrl J to join these together as well. So this here, this is the snow material, and then this up here, this is the rock material. So we want to now join them together. So to join them together, we need to use a mix shader. Now you can see right up here there is a material output, but there's also a material output down here, and we actually only want to use one material output. So right here on the procedural rock, I'm going to click on this material output, and I can click on X to delete it because we just want to use one material output. And I can bring this material output up here. And then also you can see this object object looks kind of sharp, so I need to use the object context menu and shade this object smooth. That looks better. All right, so I'm now going to press Shift A. I'm going to go here to the search, and I'm going to search for a mix shader. So a mix shader will mix two shaders together. 
So I'm going to drop the mix shader here next to the material output. And then I want to take the shader and I want to put that into the surface. So I now just need to mix both of my shaders together. So I can take the principal shader here. This is the rock one. And I'm going to stick this into the top one or the bottom one, whichever one you want to do. And then I'm going to take this one here. This is the snow. I'm going to take the principal shader and put this into the bottom one. So we are now mixing both of these together. And the factor is going to control how much of each shader it's using. So you can see if I turn the factor all the way to zero, it's just using the rock material. But if I turn the factor all the way up to one, it's just using the snow. And if I just kind of bring the factor in between here, it's just going to evenly blend between them. Now this doesn't actually look very good because I want clear places where the snow is and clear places where the rocks are. So we can create a mask and we can put the mask into the factor to tell it where it's going to be one material and where it's going to be the other material. So to do this, I'm just going to use a procedural noise texture, but you could really use any of these textures, or you could also use an image texture or really any other texture. So I'm just going to click and drag and bring this shader up here so we have space in between the two shaders. So I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for a noise texture, and I'm going to drop the noise texture right here. And then I have the Node Wrangler enabled, so if you don't have the Node Wrangler add-on turned on, you can click on Edit, and you can click on the Preferences, and then you can go over there to the Add-ons tab and search for the Node Wrangler and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. The add-on is built in a Blender, so you can just enable it. So with the Node Wrangler enabled, I can select the noise texture, and then I can press Control T, and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Now I don't need the mapping node, so I can just click on it and press X to delete it. And I want to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates will place the texture on the object more evenly. So I'm going to plug the object into the vector. And then using another feature of the Node Wrangler, I'm going to hold down the Control and Shift key and select the noise texture. And that way I can actually preview the noise texture on the object. So we're going to use the noise texture as a mask in the factor to tell it where it's going to be one shader and where it's going to be another shader. Now I want to make this more detailed, so I'm going to turn the detail all the way up to the max of 15, and then I could also turn the roughness up a little bit just to make the noise texture a bit more detailed. So that is looking good, and you can change the scale. I'm going to leave it at the default of 5. So I can now take the factor of the noise texture and I'm going to put that into the mix shader. So now the mix shader is going to use the white and black values of the noise texture to determine where each shader is going to be placed on the object. And then I can control shift and select the mix shader to preview it. Now you can see it's not really doing that much, and that's because this noise texture isn't very contrasty. So to make it more contrasty, I can press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I can search for the good old color ramp. And let's put the color ramp right in here. So we can use the color ramp to make it more contrasty by dragging these two values together. So I can click on these two tabs and I can drag them together, and now you can start to see that taking effect. So you can clearly see that some parts have the snow, whereas other parts have the rock. And if I control shift and select the color ramp, you can see that the black values are going to have the rock, and then the white values are going to have the snow and I can control shift and select the mix shader. And if you wanted to flip that, you could simply flip these two shaders. So I could just click and drag and put this wire into the bottom one, and then that one will flip it up to the top one. I'm just gonna flip these back though, cause I like that how it is. Uh, what you could also do is click and drag and you could flip the white and black values. And I actually like that a lot better. So I like having the white over here and the black over here. I like it a bit better because it kind of looks like the rock is popping out and then the snow has just kind of melted. And so it's kind of in the crevices. So you can drag this around if you want to be more contrasty, you can bring them very close together. And so you can see it's going to be very sharp on the edge. Or if you want there to be a smoother transition, you can drag them farther away, and there's going to be more blending between the two shaders. So there we go, it really is that simple. So that looks really cool. Now it looks like we have bits of snow with rock popping out. Now both of these materials are using displacement, but you can see right now I'm just using the displacement from the snow material. And so I want to add the displacement data from the rock material. So to do this, I actually want to click on this displacement here from the rock shader, and I want to delete it because we just want to use one displacement node. I now want to go down here to this other shader, and I'm going to click on the displacement, and I'm going to press Alt-P. That is going to bring it out of the frame, and I can just bring it up here and just stick it 
up here next to the mix shader. So if I control shift and select this Voronoi texture, this is the data that I was using for the displacements of the rock. And then if I control shift and select this mix here, that is the data that I'm using for the displacements of the snow. So I want to mix the data together. So I can press shift A, let's go here to the search, and I can search for the mix RGB. And we're gonna stick the mix RGB right here before the displacement. So we can use the mix RGB to mix two color values together. So I'm now gonna take the Voronoi texture, I actually have this reroute right here, that was going to the displacement. So I'm just gonna take a wire here from the reroute, and I'm gonna put that into color one, and then this value right here, this is the displacement for the snow, that is gonna go into color two. So we're now mixing them both together and I can control shift and select this mix shader to preview it now I just want to add the white values because if the values are lighter it's going to make the displacement pop out more so I'm going to click on the mix here and then I can change this to lighten and then I want to completely add all of the lighter values so I'm going to turn the factor to one so now you can see that it's mixing them together. So we have the displacement from the snow, but then we also have those sharp areas and that's the displacement from the rocks. So I can now control shift and select the mix shader to preview it. Now it is a bit too strong, so I'm going to turn the scale down here on the displacement. So I think I'll just turn this down to like a 0.12. That is pretty good, although maybe I'll change this to like a 0.14 so it's a bit more sharp. And then to give the displacement more detail, I'm actually gonna go over here to the modifier properties. I'm gonna click on add modifier, and I'm gonna add a subdivision surface to this object just to give it a bit more detail so the displacement has more geometry to work with. And then of course you can continue to customize the materials. So I think I might drag these around to get a different look. And then something else that I wanna do is make the bump stronger. So I'm gonna to go to all the bump nodes and I'm gonna make it quite a bit stronger. So I think I'll make this like a 0.5 so it's a bit stronger. You can see now the rocks look more sharp. And then also right down here on the snow, I can maybe turn up the strength of this one and also turn up the strength of that one. And I think I want a bit more snow. So I'm gonna play around with these values. I'm gonna drag this back here on the color ramp just to add a bit more snow. And there we have it. So we've combined the two materials together. So now we have this really cool mountain looking material. It kind of looks like a snowy mountain with some jagged rocks and snow all around. And so that is it. That is how you combine two materials together. And then of course, if you didn't want to use a noise texture, you could use any other texture. So you could use an image texture that you have. You could also use any of these other textures here. You could play around with that. Or you could also use like a gradient. So I could press shift A, go to the search, and I could search for the gradient texture and I could replace the gradient texture here in the color ramp so replace it for the noise texture and so you can see if I control shift and select the gradient we have black over here and white over here so if I control shift and select the mix shader you can see one side is going to be snow and the other side is going to be rock. I'm going to use the noise texture because I want it to look very random so I'm going to take the factor and put that into the color ramp. So that's gonna be it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to purchase both of these two procedural materials, then you can get those on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials, then you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs. And if you'd like to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, then be sure to check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist, where I have tutorials on all of my procedural materials. But I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.